names, names like PHEL, LIC, Housing Finance, Spice Jet, Aviation, of course, has been one name that has been uh, doing uh, well. About 40 seconds remaining uh, for uh, for opening, as we told you, 24 points is what uh, Nifty has indicated in pre-open session. Within the pre-open session, uh, there have been uh, some interesting moves. So if I look at the top loser's name, it, it probably uh, should be among the auto pack. Maruti, uh, m and Wipro. Wipro and m and are the two top losers. Wipro down two, uh, sorry, m and down 2.6 and Wipro down about 1.8. We should get the opening prizes anytime soon. Autos as a pack would be in focus. Apart from that, uh, nothing much to look on the upside. But uh, there has been a risk on rally, so maybe we can see short covering in majority of the names. Uh, oil marketing companies on the price cut uh, should also be in focus. About 10 seconds remaining. Prices should come start uh, coming in. Uh, we have the first trades uh, with us. Nifty is up 23 odd points, exactly as indicated by the pre-open session. Tata Motors on your screen is down about 5%. Tata Steel is up about 2 rupees or so. PNB is uh, flat with a positive bias. Wipro opens down 1%. Remember, they have issued a profit warning. LNT, two price cuts. Yesterday also we had a call coming in which had uh, downgraded the price target for LNT. BHEL up about a percent or so, 167. M&M on your screen. The biggest impact uh, of uh, this ban, if it actually uh, you know goes through and others also follow it, it's about 3% decline, 1250 rupees uh, for M&M. BPCL is up 1.5% again as expected because prices have been cut. That is off for crude and always tends to benefit uh, the oil marketing companies. Infosys is up about a percent. Maruti is up 28 rupees. As I told you, Maruti would not have a very, very big impact and uh, the reason is uh, all uh, because we know that uh, they have most of the cars in petrol and they have all the cars in variants of petrol. Idea is up about a percent. HCL Tech is up about 0.8. Wipro on your screen is uh, 3 to 3.5 rupees on the lower side, 0.6 percent. They have issued a profit warning but again, you know, the street uh, is not surprised by this move. Maruti is up about 20 rupees, 0.4 percent on the higher side. Uh, the detail uh, of this uh, order is expected at 10.30 today. M&M is sliding more, 3.5 percent decline. Tata Motors, again, the impact on Tata Motors would be limited but then it has a sentiment impact. If others follow what happens, how do things go ahead? Tech Mahindra is a name which was in focus yesterday, was down 4 percent but maybe some of the reports suggest that concerns are overdone. 5 rupees higher for Tech Mahindra. LIC Housing Finance, there is a news flow regarding this company and the news flow of course is uh, that uh, you know uh, they have acquired 19 percent stake in lic numura jet airways is up 1.6 it was up about 8 10 percent yesterday so very very strong open for this name bhel is up about a percent or so 168 uh, the news flow that came out was not that great but still it's a name which is reacting to that orchid chemical is up 1.8 uh, mahindra holidays is up 1.2 but volumes on mahindra are very very thin so uh, essentially it's not a proper price discovery ivrcl is looking to convert its debt into equity or a part of its debt into equity it's up about four percent Intellect Design, IDFC Bank, which is a new age bank, has given an order to them for using their banking solution, 1.3% higher for Intellect Design Arena. 33 points higher now for Nifty, 7734. It's not exactly as you know one would have thought uh, uh, in the open looking at the global markets, but uh, it's looking indecently strong. HCL Tech, interestingly, is up about a percent or so. Uh, m, m OK is down 3.3. HCL Tech, we were talking about. They have the largest facility in Chennai in terms of percentage of employees uh, being over there. Tech Mahindra is up about 5 rupees or so. NTPC is up 0.6. BPCL is now up about 1.5 percent. TCS 20, 25 rupees higher. Asian Paints up 4.5 odd percent. As far as uh, the mid cap index is concerned, let's uh, look at it now about 3 to 4 minutes in opening. So an info edge is up about 2.6. Pipa of Defense is up 2 percent. Let's look at SKS Microfinance. Now SKS Microfinance is a company which uh, Morgan Stanley has upgraded today to an overweight. It's up close to about 2 to 2.5 percent. 400 70 for SKS Microfinance. IGL, uh, let's pull up that one as well. It's expected uh, to be one of the biggest beneficiary of the focus on Delhi pollution. Uh, with whatever is happening in various different regions or, you know, varying different segment of uh, uh, cars and uh, household, IGL is expected to have expected to have a positive impact. Maybe that's the reason why it's up 2%. Uh, ABB was up 6% yesterday. It's followed by a good 1% move today. BPCL is now looking strong. It's up 1.5. Gujarat Pepawa is up 1.2%. United Phosphorus is up 1.7. BEL is up 1.2%. Gujarat Pepawa port 1.2% higher. Glenmark 
is up about 1.2. Amtech, Adani Power, ONGC are some of the other gainers. Mahindra and Mahindra is the top loser. It's down 3. Titan is down 1.6 and Tata Motors is down about 1.5 uh, odd percent. Uh, Prashasta Seth and Gaurav Bissa now joins us this morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Gaurav, let me come to you first. Uh, ahead of such a big event of uh, FOMC, uh, what are the derivative uh, markets indicating to you? Where essentially is the bottom, where there is a lot of put writing which has happened? Good morning. Uh, I would not uh, specifically talk of uh, bottom because that would not be the right way to approach it. But yes, uh, 7500 seems to be a good uh, support for the uh, Nifty. Uh, I, I would say in irrespective of uh, Fed meeting, uh, it's a strong statement. But I feel even if we have a uh, not so good statement comes from Fed meeting, I think 7450, 7500 uh, would be the key level which I think would provide a, a strong support to the Nifty and Nifty may see a bounce from those levels. Uh, as far as the current uh, market providing rates are concerned, I would say 7720 is a very crucial level. Uh, if these levels are held, then a very short term uh, trading uh, uh, targets of 7800, 7500 uh, would be in place. Uh, again, we have not seen significant buying happening or not significant shorts happening that a short covering would lead to 8200 kind of levels. So that would be again not right the uh, right approach uh, for a very short term i would say if the current levels are held then in, in today itself we may see 7800 coming in the nifty uh, if 7700 is not sustained uh, then we have some more pressure coming in uh, in the next couple of trading sessions and as far as the fed goes i think uh, uh, if nifty falls to around 7500 or 7450 that would be a very very lucrative uh, uh, price point to go along in the nifty or in individual counters or individual sectors and i would be hoping that we get a, a good base a formation somewhere around 7450 7500 right uh, bank nifty and uh, the overall performance over there uh, you think it is uh, slightly more vulnerable uh, to the events that are happening globally rather than some of the other sectors? Yes, certainly, uh, if you look at uh, yesterday's performance as well, uh, Nifty, I think it, it went up on its own. Uh, bank Nifty did not give that much of push, or the Nifty Bank did not give that much of push. Today also you see that Nifty and uh, Nifty Bank both are having similar kind of uh, gains you know, in terms of uh, absolute value. So I think uh, it, it is the more vulnerable part. Uh, near 16,000 spot levels, I think it will be a very fantastic buy because uh, these are the levels from where we have seen multiple uh, rounds of short covering happening. So if we see again uh, the levels of 16,000 being held, 15,900, 16,000, whatever that may be, if these levels are held, then a 10% move in the bank nifty can be seen in, uh, in, in, in a month or so. And if it's breaching 16,000 levels, then I will say, God forbid, we might again see 5 to 8% correction even more coming in from those levels. So these levels are very, very crucial, uh, not for uh, nifty as, as a whole, but I would say for nifty bank, 16,000 spot level is very crucial. And I would say the risk reward uh, would be more uh, favorable. If it falls a little bit and sustains the levels of 15,900 and 16,000, that would be a very good risk reward buying from those levels. Right. Uh, uh, Prashasta, what would uh, you make of the markets, the sell-off that we have seen into equity markets ahead of FOMC event? Uh, do you think uh, people are positioned uh, for, for you know, a rate hike of uh, 25 basis points? See, my sense is a lot of short covering uh, that has happened uh, uh, in the last two days and uh, I think uh, especially in India I think there was huge set of shots uh, which had built up uh, over the last two or three months and I think ahead of the event uh, you know you have seen a reasonable amount of short covering uh, happening uh, because I think the general view is that market should kind of bounce back post the Fed rate hike both locally as well as globally. So I think that's what I think has happened in the both local as well as global markets. I think, uh, you know, given the fact that there were a huge set of shorts that were built up, I think people wanted to kind of, uh, you know, take some of the profits uh, before that big event. Uh, so I think that's what has happened. I think, uh, you know, that new set of direction for the market, I think, will potentially be uh, visible over the course of the next few days once we have more clarity on, on what the Fed is saying and how the markets are reacting to it. I think till, uh, you know, you know, till this point, I would think it's more of a short covering rather than, uh, you know, anything else at this point of time. Right. Uh, what do you make of uh, what's happening in Delhi in terms of auto, the diesel ban over there? You think it'll have a big impact on the auto, auto sector? I think it's unlikely. I think it will just take multiple years to play out. I don't see, you know, for example, this uh, odd even thing playing out after, you know, 15 days. 
and because uh, I think there are issues in terms of implementation, public transport and so on and so forth. And uh, so to that extent, that's not going to happen. Now, what impact it will have in terms of, you know, banning diesel cars, you know, going for LPG, again, I think it's something that will play out over a period of time because any order will be kind of uh, challenged in courts and so on and so forth. So I, it's too early, I think, to take a definite call on what is going to happen and how to position your portfolio to benefit from it. I think, uh, you know, even if the events plays out uh, the way, uh, you know, it is looking now, it's going to take a reasonable amount of time. It's not going to happen in a hurry. Right, but uh, do you think, you know, the sort of capacities that uh, some of these companies have built for diesel, uh, you know, if, if some of the other cities follow or some, or some of the other states follow, it could have a huge impact? I think it's too early to, you know, take that bet uh, because I think first of all we need to see how uh, this whole Delhi thing goes, uh, you know, and what kind of challenges comes in the courts and so on and so forth. And I think till that clarity emerges and, uh, you know, everything is clear as per law, I think uh, other cities I will find it very difficult to think will implement that step. So I think people will wait and watch and see how this whole thing are playing out is playing out and once they have more clarity on that, I think only then, you know, even if somebody wants to ban, will ban it. So I think it's too early to comment on that. Right. Uh, Gaurav, what would be your view on M&M after a 4% cut right now? Well, uh, m and was looking uh, the more decent name among the auto, auto pack uh, and, and if it's, I would not be buying at these levels but a little bit higher levels if it's holding on to 1250, 1260, uh, I think that would be the levels from where you can see some bounce back happening. We have seen some amount of shortcoming happening from those levels uh, and not just on one occasion, it has been on a couple of occasions. So rather than uh, trying to find a bottom in place, you know, I would rather say uh, let us wait for a day or two and if it's trading above uh, the 1255, 1260 kind of levels, then we can again play for a, a technical or trading bounce till 1340, 1350 levels. Right. Within the same group, Tech Mahindra was down 4 odd percent yesterday. Today it's a 5 rupee decline. Uh, any view on that name? Uh, well, it has. Uh, if, you, if you look at the uh, overall performance, it has yesterday uh, shown uh, levels of 518, 520. Today it's at 525. So 515 is a very crucial zone. It's been uh, holding as a good support. If you look at the uh, patterns, uh, OI pattern versus the price patterns for last uh, uh, few months, uh, if not quarters, then you will see that 515 has been the level from where it has seen short covering, and 570, 565 are the levels from where it has seen long unwinding. So I would not be uh, initiating shorts at these levels. Uh, below 5.15, yes, it, it makes sense because then we can have a, a fresh, uh, aggressive shorts coming into the picture and it can fall below 500 kind of levels. At these levels, I would not be initiating a short. I would wait for uh, initiating a long portion, but then again, not here. Uh, about 5.35, 5.40, uh, that is the level from where we have seen some trading longs coming uh, in the stock. So I would wait for those levels or uh, a short below 515. This will be a no trade zone for me. Right. Uh, Prashasta, any view on Tech Mahindra not giving a buy or sell, but uh, on the acquisition? You think uh, they'll be able to turn around the history that they have in terms of acquisition and what they have done earlier? No, I think, uh, you know, if you ask me in terms of history, I think all the acquisitions kind of they have done, I think, over a longer term of period of time, I think, have played out in their way. So, you know, not commenting on the specific transaction, but generally I think uh, you would give them that benefit of doubt and the fact that the leadership team there has been able to identify the right side of acquisitions and has been able to diversify the company from the telecom business, have been able to fill the, the gaps that they were in their uh, service offering. So I think uh, in the last two or three years or, or more than that, if you take the history, I think if that is an indicator, I think most of their acquisitions have kind of played out in their way. So, I think, uh, you know, obviously from that perspective, I think you would want to give the benefit of doubt to the management. Right. How would you look at the aviation space, Prashasta? Two years back, nobody wanted to touch the sector, but it's been the best performing sector this year. Yeah, so you have a combination of, uh, you know, lower fuel prices as well as, uh, you know, passenger growth sustaining. So I think uh, that's what is helping the aviation sector. I think the key could challenge would be or the key thing to watch out is how the fares pan out over the next couple of quarters. Uh, because I think this is was the seasonally a strong quarter, uh, the December quarter and uh, 
companies were able to kind of have a higher price at this point of time. Uh, going forward, I think we need to watch and see whether they will be able to sustain, uh, you know, the pricing uh, over the slightly lean quarters. And there are signs that those pricing might not sustain. So I think that's something that we'll need to kind of uh, wait and watch and see over the next couple of quarters. Obviously, at this price, I think you are pricing in a reasonable margin expansion and uh, reasonable growth. So you have to, you know, wait and watch and see on how those assumptions pan out. Right. Uh, Prashasta, as we are talking and just wanted to highlight that Mahindra and Mahindra have lost out quite a bit now. It's uh, down about 5.5% at the day's low, 1218 uh, for m and &M. uh, Gaurav, any other auto names that you feel uh, can follow? I mean, okay, fundamentally it doesn't have much of an impact. But then, you know, you can't have one name trading at very low valuations, continuous shorting activity and other names uh, going up. Do you think the auto sector may underperform for a while till we have clarity on this news? Well, they have seen uh, their share of fall already. Uh, I would not be expecting a major fall happening in auto names. So we might see a fall happening just on account of uh, uh, any fall in Nifty. But uh, uh, apart from that, in isolation, I don't see a big fall coming in auto names. Rather, I would be waiting that if some of the auto names are again seeing some correction, then they would become a, a lucrative buy. We have seen a good amount of jump coming in from Tata Motors from 360 to 375 levels in a matter of a day or two. And similarly, is expected from other names. Probably m and might also catch up in, in, in coming days. So I would rather wait for the levels and I would be initiating longs at, in these levels rather than waiting and you know trying to create a shorts at higher levels. Right. Uh, Gaurav Prashasta, thank you so much for taking out time for us. Always a pleasure talking to you.